Commenter Daniel Broadway wanted to look at my shader setup for the TMP Enterprise, and I thought it'd be a great idea for a video. I've adored this ship ever since I was a little kid. It really got me into Star Trek. Not only is the model itself exquisite, but it features an extraordinary paint job by airbrush artist Paul Olson. It has an intricate pearlescent effect to delineate the tiles that actually had to be toned down a bit in order to keep it from poking holes in the composite mats. This is my attempt to create an effect somewhere in between what is seen on screen and the reports and photos of the way it looked in the 1970s, though I wasn't actually there to see the model. So now I'll share my shader setup. Alright, so here it is, and I know it looks pretty complicated, and it is, at least for me. I usually keep my materials really simple. But for this one, I had to take all these steps in order to get a result that I was satisfied with. So first of all, of course, there is the diffuse bitmap. Which is just basically the way the paint looks on the ship normally without any specularity or light reflections, and that's plugged into the diffuse map slot. What's going to be much more interesting, of course, is going to be the reflected color, which is this map right here of all the specular colors that I got from the movie model, or at least what I believe to be on the movie model. So this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky, but I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So this is, of course, plugged into a color correction map. And this was just all tweaking. I thought that all of these settings would work right out of the box, just these colors, but it never really works out that way, right? When you're rendering something, you have to tweak it. And that's what these color correct maps are good for. Now, this isn't really a tutorial on how to use Corona materials. There are much better resources available for you on YouTube. I'm just trying to give you my thought process as to how I made this happen. So I made it a bit less saturated. And you'll note what I also did was I plugged it into this falloff map, and I want to give you a little demonstration as to what that is. So a falloff map, for those that don't know, is it makes the texture look one way when it's seen head on. And you'll see here, see how it gets a lot more colorful when you see it kind of head on like this? I don't know if you can see that in the render engine. Right there, it's very colorful. But as I turn away, give it a more oblique angle, you see now that it's very light. This is all trying to mimic effects that I've seen in movies and in still shots of the model from the 70s. So I got that effect from from a falloff map. I didn't want it to look completely colorful, and I didn't also want it to look completely washed out because that would defeat the purpose of what I was trying to do here. I want to get that really nice, colorful, pearlescent effect. So that, you'll see, is plugged into the reflection color. And there's also reflection gloss, which is kind of the same thing, but instead of color, of course, dictates the glossiness or how much shininess, if you will, the material has. So once again, this is plugged into a color correction map. This was to make it a lot lighter, so it would be a lot more reflective. And this, too, is plugged into a falloff map. So I'll try and give you a look here. So as, as you can see, if you're looking really head-on, the reflectivity kind of falls off because it became too much, and it gets higher and higher as you turn away. So you get a nice, you get a nice sort of falloff effect right there, too. So if you're looking at it too much, it's not going to glare out. But as you turn the ship away from the camera, just as I demonstrated, it becomes more and more reflective. So that's how I got that look. And finally, this is where it really started to come into its own. I wasn't getting the results I wanted at all without this step. It took me a lot of experimentation to finally get it. But you'll see I plugged everything into frontal IOR. And for those that aren't familiar, just a really quick kind of demonstration as to what frontal IOR is. It's the supposed, quote, metalness of a object the way that it refracts light off of its surface. And this is a really great part of using these physical based render engines like Corona, V-Ray, all these modern render engines have this feature. So you just dial in this number to get the metalness. Now, the pearlescent paints that were used on these models actually had little flecks of metal in them. And that's where you get this pearlescent shiny effect, right? It looks like shiny metal. So I had to turn up that effect for the panels. You'll see here, the panels that are reflecting look more metallic than the panels that are not reflecting, right? I mean, they're reflecting a little bit, but this is supposed to be more or less of a low gloss, flat white paint. But these are looking metallic, and I got this look finally by using this map right here. So what I did was I plugged this. <laughs> I know it's getting, <laughs> getting a little lost in the weeds here, but just bear with me. I plugged this output map which is a little bit brighter than this map, which is a desaturated version of this map, 
into color correction because I had to invert it, right? So the light tiles are going to be metallic and the dark tiles are not going to be metallic. And that corresponds exactly to the inverse, right? So this inverts everything. So that means that everything that's dark in here is going to be shiny here. And of course, I use my falloff map in order to achieve that same falloff effect. I wanted this effect to correspond to all three of these nodes. I didn't just want to do it in one because that would just create an inconsistent look and that's not what I wanted. So all of these in effect will affect the metalness of the final pearlescent material. And that's what you're seeing there. And finally, this is really subtle, but it shows in close-up renders. I just use a fuzz. You can't really see it in this in this image, but I use like a fuzz normal map to simulate the orange peel because I wanted to give the paint a bit more structure. I didn't want it looking flat and cartoonish. And another noise map, just give it a bit more bumpiness. And that, of course, is plugged into the bump slot. So this is really the gist of the shader setup. Again, just to summarize, the diffuse is just a very plain color, just like you know you looked at the model just in flat lighting. This is the specularity map, which is the pearlescent colors. And this all contributes to the different pearlescent levels, such as the color fall off and the glossy fall off, as well as the metalness fall off. All of these combine to create the pearlescent effect. And I'm really, really happy with the way that this came out. This was basically my final motivation for building this model. As you know, as I mentioned before, I've always loved this model. The shape is great. The model is great. There's something about this pearlescent effect that really pushes it over the top for me. And I was really happy with the way that this finally came out in my final renders. And of course, it goes ship wide. It's not just on the saucer. I just think it looks the coolest on the saucer with the ass teching and everything. But just like in the movie, all of the parts that are white basically have this going on when it hits the specularity. And for those that are curious, the spec highlights show up when it reflects the actual light source. So just being lit isn't going to change the colors, right? See, like you're not really seeing it here very much. But once it reflects the actual light source, the actual light source that's bouncing off and onto the ship, then you're going to get that pearlescent effect. So I hope you found this useful. This project was really a labor of love for me. I'm sorry I didn't put on video, but this was completed well before I started this YouTube channel. But I thought I'd give everyone a look at how I made this pearlescent effect on the ship. And hopefully if you decide to build your own TMP Enterprise model, you'll look at this shader guide. Even if you're not using Corona, it'll probably be useful because a lot of the render engines will use these same principles. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon.